I know that uh, so many uh, my, uh, questions come to your mind and also uh, so many uh, issues are running through your minds uh, regarding what will happen this week on Thursday as uh, you go to various polling stations and um, decide to pick one man or woman among us the Skistain presidential aspirants that have offered themselves to preserve the affairs of this country, Zambia, from now going to 2026. That moment, the D-Day, we've been talking about from 2016 until now, is finally here with only three days remaining. Let's find out who is ready to take up the presidents come Thursday, this week. Take you through the program. My name is uh, Innocent Piri. You can simply call me as usual by calling me IP. Let's find out. I'm, I'm sure that from May, the time when the campaigns commenced up to date, you've managed to acquire or to grab one of uh, the political parties and, uh, of course, uh, peruse through. And I'm sure you have made a final decision regarding which political party or which leader is going to be your next. Republican president. So many issues have been talked about. The harsh economy that uh, Zambians are going through right now. Issues to deal with corruption have been talked about under the PF government. And of course, uh, issues to deal with the load shedding. Just today, the country uh, in various parts of the nation, we were in a blackout uh, load shedding. And of course, these are the issues that people are talking about. And uh, you are looking for that possible messiah to answer or to address all these matters. Let's engage in our guest on the program, and I'm not sure if at all from now to our next week Sunday, as I come back on this set, I will be able to engage him, because maybe you never know, he might be the Republican president. My guest on the program is uh, Stephen Nyerenda, or Stephen Nyerenda, who happens to be the National Restoration Party president. Let's inquire, after this discussion, where will you be? State House or still at his party secretariat? Mr. President, welcome to the program. Uh, Mr. Piri, thanks very much. Um, Zambia is for Zambians, and only Zambians will develop this country. It's my pleasure. Fantastic. Let's begin from here again. Uh, maybe you can quickly answer my question. Um, am I sitting on this platform for the last time with you as an opposition leader? <laughs> Every time you sit there, you let sit there for the last time. Mm. But I, will, I promise you, yeah. even the day that I'll be, I'll go to state house, mm. I will still come here. I will still go to uh, other uh, uh, radio stations and TV stations mm. and be interviewed me there. And this is another problem that we are yeah. having because we believe that once you are elected as a president, mm. then you you cannot go back to the people who elected. No. Mm. Going back to the people is one of these platforms to come here so that people can, uh, can ask me questions. Mm. People can interact with me. People can put their views forward. And I listen. Once I listen, I go and tune up things. Mm. So it may well, be not the last time. It, it, it might be, or maybe it's going to be unprecedented uh, to the people of Zambia, most especially we in the media fraternity, because uh, you are a media guru. And you have seen it before during the time of, uh, let's talk about maybe the UNIP, before I was born myself, at least in the MMD I was there uh, personally, and uh, we saw that there was that less engagement, but at least much better than what we see today uh, in terms of uh, having those press conferences with the media. You know, uh, uh, Michael said as well, it was uh, a similar issue as well, and uh, ECL, I do not remember the last time he held a press conference at State House. Uh, the one I remember, I think the last one was in 2016, uh, which of course uh, he was talking about the uh, issue of uh, uh, ministers remaining in office and the likes. You know, and you are a media guru. You are promising the media fraternity to have that engagement throughout. Yeah. How true are you to those words? Uh, because there you, is you, you're a bureaucratic not... type you know, in government. Yes. You want to see your own president, yeah. a citizen number one, they will tell you you need to see, you know, Mr. X, Madam X and the likes, by the end, by the day you realize it will be already five years. Well, um, when one becomes the president, he's no longer, he's, he becomes a state uh, property. Mm. It's a state's issue. Mm. People manage you and so on. But you, yourself, 
when you go behind the scenes, you should know that yes, they do manage me, but the people who put me here, they want to interact with me. They want to see me. I remember the last, the 2015, yes. when uh, ECL was uh, being elected, mm. the, the, he came here first. He sat here. Sure. After here, he came to my office up there. Mm. And I said the same stuff. I said, we hope that immediately you go there, you, be, you come back here mm. to make sure that you, as you have started this in interview, mm. you finish again with this stuff. Mm. He never came back here, despite the fact that he promised me. So mm. I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised if the others don't do that, mm. but I will do it. Because what causes that? You well, in the media. Sorry, I keep on pressing you because you are a media you know, expert. Um, I should make mention that you are the main man that introduced, you know, uh, uh, a private TV station in Zambia when many people thought that Zambia cannot have a private TV uh, uh, institution in Zambia. Yes. You know, it came in competing with ZNBC. Yes. At some point, again, ZNBC felt the pressure. Yes. you respect, and then they came up with the TV2 and the likes. Yes. Vast knowledge. What do you think most of the leaders, they run away from the cameras? I'll, the I'll, I'll just run away from the, your question. Yeah. I will answer it. That, that's, that's why people need to, to vote for me. Because immediately they vote for me, immediately I take over this country, mm. I will turn this country upside down. I will make sure that the people of Zambia mm. do enjoy the country, that the people of Zambia do enjoy these goods and services that the government provides, mm. that this country has for them, as God put us here. Mm. But anyway, the people would not, do not want... Some of them they don't want because the promises they did to the people, mm. they are not able to put them forward. Mm. I remember I was, I was here very instrumental yeah. on PF when Sata, Sata came here to meet me several times mm. and di discuss certain things with me. Mm. And I remember President Sata, may he so rest in peace, mm. promising, promising heavily, mm. I'm, not, I'm going to get these Chinese out. Hmm. I'm going to make sure that within 90 days everything changes. Hmm. Everyone will have a lot of money in his pocket. Hmm. Immediately he got into power. The first thing that he did, he had a very nice dinner with all sorts of things on the table, hmm. feeling good. What did we say next? Next we see Chinese inf in influx into the country. Zambia is not having jobs. What did we see? The 90 days elapsed, hmm. there was nothing. What did we see now? Unfortunately, unfortunately, mm. but anyway, there are some few things that did. Unfortunately, uh, he left us, mm. they took over. Uh, Sata had some integrity, had a vision, mm. had certain things that he was pushing forward. Mm. Yeah? I remember what I talk mostly, yeah. the road between Chama and uh, Lundazi. Mm. There's no road. Since 1964, Sata started it. And when he died, he, it died also just there. So the man had vision. Somehow, somewhere, mm. he had vision. But they took over. They, what they are promising, they cannot push it forward. Mm. Therefore, they are afraid that if they sat here and you open those lines, mm. the people would put up questions which they cannot answer. Mm. Me, I'll, I'll be there. I'll answer any question at any time. Mm. Even whilst I'm waking up from my bed, I can answer this question. I leave what I say. Mm. Whatever I say here is what will happen. Talking about the media, uh, you know, an industry that uh, uh, you, you, you are coming from. You know, I know that you're also, you know, an, in, an engineer, but I think the people of Zambia have known you uh, for being uh, a media, uh, 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 should I say, a, a practitioner and the likes. Let's talk about what other changes, what development would you bring to the media, fraternity? I think yes. this one topic that we have less talked about it. Yes. Let's, what hope are you giving to the media fraternity? First of all, those who know me, yeah. number one, there should be access to information. Mm. The, 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 the journalists mm. should have access to the information because mm. that information mm. Is it's very vital that that information gets down to the people, mm. that the people know they can make very well-informed decisions about their lives. Mm. It's not like that, number one. Number two, 
But before, perhaps that is number two. Number one, the first thing to do is to train mm. to put powerful journalism schools in here, mm. media schools in here. There is a problem in this country. The problem in this country is that we don't have journalists. I'm sorry to say that. Mm. Uh, we don't have journalists, and I can prove to you, mm. just by bringing two examples. Yeah, sure. uh, we were gassed. People were gassed mm. uh, last year. People died, and mm. so on and so on. Do we know who was behind that? If we had the proper journalism, we would have told the people who that was. Mm. We had the 48, is it 48 or 49 houses? Sure which we found out which are entangled in corruption. Mm. Do we know up to today who is the owner of those houses? Mm. The houses are there. They are physically there. You can go and touch them and see them. People are living there. Bills are being paid, mm. which means easily we can know mm. who is the owner. Do we know? And this is journalism. If the journalists were good enough in this country, and I challenge them, we need to know. I challenge, right up now, just what we are going undergoing, we have got COVID. Mm. Have the people been enlightened about COVID? Mm. No. When people were dying in masses and things like that, I called a lot of media, mm. starting from radio station press, I said, you guys, what are you doing? Sensitize the people. Tell the people what is happening so that the people can make informed decisions about themselves. Mm. There's nothing. So we need powerful schools, mm. powerful schools in, a different, in a different categories, which should train the journalists. Mm. And then from there, we need actually to make sure that we empower the journalists. Mm. You know, first of all, you give them a uh, skill. Mm. You give them equipment so that they can do the right jobs. You will give them then mm. some resources in terms of money. Mm. So journalism, you do not necessarily to be entangled to any institution. You can be a very powerful uh, investigative, uh, do investigative journalism mm. in your home. And that's what's happening. And you bring the stories. So once you are empowered, mm. you've got the equipment, you are trained, and you, 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 we, we take you to where you can borrow the money, mm. and we, we are there like guarantors you will see the journalism mushrooming here, mm. being very powerful. I'm glad I'm you've mentioned that. Uh, I'm glad you've, me you've talked about uh, empowering the media or the journalists in Zambia yes. so that, uh, you know, we can be effective, you know, carry out our duties. Because I personally, I think, I've been privileged to mingle with the different, you know, uh, media experts, uh, including the, the veterans who can talk about, you know, mm. and uh, to question them, to say, why is that our journalism in Zambia it seems to be very different in terms of uh, investigation? Does it mean that we don't have people that can able to vigorously or aggressively uh, investigate issues? But so mm. many issues have come about. People have talked about uh, the thing where the media or journalists in Zambia, they lack, you know, media protection. Yeah. You know, you can carry out your, 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 your story, investigative story, but mm. uh, if you are not lucky along the way, you are going to be penalized by the, by the law enforcers or yeah. well, maybe the, the government. Yeah. So people are not really protected to ensure that their job is protected. And mm. I'm happy you've talked about uh, uh, access to information bill, which has been lying under the shelves of government for a long time, the corridors of government, for so many years now. You've talked about the low wages that the journalists in Zambia are getting as well. Don't mm. you think that could be one of the most demotivating factors that is contributing to all these things we are talking about. Mm. Uh, no, you know, uh, Mr. Piri, mm. when I talk about these issues or problems that we have, yeah. I, 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 to, 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 to stand mm. here or in this country to say I want to become a president, mm. you must know that your job is not to, to sweep the house. Your job is to make the house. Right. What I'm talking about, I am, I am, and I will be a mm. policy maker for this country. I am a policy maker at the level where I am. Mm. So a policy maker needs to know, first of all, the problems. Mm. Now, th that question that you have put forward, I want to go backwards. Yeah. I want to look at the problems. Mm. This country has got economical problems. Yeah. For a journalist to earn money, mm. for any house, a journalism to house mm. to earn money, you have to rely on advertising. Exactly. So there must be mm. sponsors or people who mm. advertise. Sure. Now I'll go back, mm. backwards. Who is advertising in this country? Mm. Now you will see the economy. 
The economy is in the hands of the Zambians. Right up now, you move TV as far as I know, because I signed that contract before I left here. Mm -hmm. You are the custodian of the Olympics rights. You are supposed to be the person showing Olympics and giving Olympics to everybody else. Mm -hmm. You are not doing it. Why? Because you don't have the two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to pay the owners of the, the content. Why? Because you don't have the sponsor. Why don't you have the sponsor? Because the economy is not in the hands of the Zambians. The economy is in the hands of the foreigners. And the foreigners are not interested in sponsoring anything so that you can grow, in sponsoring anything so that a journalist can grow. You see where I'm coming from. And why are, is the economy in the hands of the foreigners? It's because, because the leadership does not deliberately change that. It's the leadership, the policymaker, me as a policymaker, I must deliberately change to make sure that the economy goes in the hands of the Zambians. Mm -hmm. If the economy is in the hands of the Zambians, the Zambians are going to sponsor the programs. Mm -hmm. If they sponsor the programs, the generals will have money. If the generals have money, the generals now will feel comfortable and be able to do the right job. Mm -hmm. I think I've answered in your question. Yeah, you, there you, must be a cause, and the cause is leadership. Mm. If you don't have leadership, you can go nowhere. And we do not have leadership. The leadership must make sure that it promotes, mm. it promotes the youth in terms of creativity mm. and innovation. And this is what we are talking about. Mm. If a journalist is creative and he has got innovation, he will tell us who is the person who is the owner of the 49 houses. Mm. If the journalist is creative, and innovative, he will tell us who was get, uh, gassing us. Mm. Because you go deeper in his creative, in his job. Mm. So in every aspect that you are looking for, I will tell you how it is attached to the, to the leadership. And I, I love to see what the cause is. Now, I can also go further and tell you what is the problem of our leadership in this country. Mm. But anyway, it's, uh, it's you asking me in questions. I'm glad you've uh, also mentioned the issue of uh, lack of leadership. Uh, I think that's one phrase you've been using uh, all the way from the time you went into politics and to date. Your message has been that Zambia is lacking that quality leadership, uh, that uh, radical leadership that is, can transform, that can establish better policies to favor the people of Zambia. Others will tell you that are watching this program right now, or possibly those that are in government, I'm sure you've heard them talking about before, that... Uh, you know, some of you people, you just speak for the sake of uh, gaining political mileage. Mm. You do not have experience or governance experience because you have never been in government before. So mm. most of the things that you talk about possibly could be mere rhetorics. Mm. You gave an example about Michael Chulufiasata, may he so rest in peace as well, mm. who had vowed never to engage or to do business with the Chinese. Mm. When he was sworn in, like you've mentioned, mm. he was the the, 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 the Chinese people were the first people that had a meal with him at State House. Mm. So, how do you, it appears, are you contradicting yourself to no. all these submissions? No, 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 we don't. Yeah. But, but uh, if you want to talk about, my, you want to compare with Michael Sata, mm. it's a different number. Uh, compare Apple to Apple. Mm. Michael Sata has been in the government for a long time. Mm. A long time. Starting from perhaps UNIP, then comes you MMD, mm. PA, P, his PF, and so on. So he is a man mm. who was always dining with the president. Mm. I remember when I came, I visited President um, uh, Chiluba that time. Michael Sata was always there with President Chiluba mm. as a minister without portfolio. He was always there. Maybe so he ma had experience. Yes. The man had experience, experience. Actually. even when he was telling us, whatever he was telling us, mm. he knew what he was, where he was driving to. Now, uh, he, so you... W just answer that question. Mm. Was he doing that just for politics, that if I form government, I'm not going to do any business with Chinese people? Mm. Then he did the, you, the you see, You see, um, uh, let, let's, let's not be naive. Yeah. Uh, they say uh, you don't eat the Nshima as hot as it is being cooked. You wait for it. After you cook it, it boils. Mm. After you cook it, you let it cool down and you eat it. Mm. So he was not, he, the way he was cooking his, his politics, mm. it was hot. 
and he let it cool down and then he can now enjoy the ruling. Mm. So I don't want to go further. Or he faced the realities. Just like you might go there and find a system that you can't dismantle. They will tell you, Buana, where you've come here, it's a government now. There's a system in place. The Chinese people that you were saying, or the um, foreign investors that you thought that some of them, you cannot work with them. Mm. These are the people that are financing our economy, our nation. Uh, for me, that's already a problem. If, if there are people who are financing our mm. government, our economy, and things like that, it is a problem. Nobody should finance our government. Right. Why should it? There's no free lunch in this world. Anybody who comes here right up now, we know mm. that certain parties have been heavily financed. Should they go there, mm. they, there's payback time coming. They have to take, the, they have to give them whatever they have promised them, mm. whether it's contracts, whether it's mineral royalties or whatever. Mm. The, this is what, this is the reality. We must be very, very careful mm. where we are going. I'm telling you, let's be very, very careful. What is happening in Africa mm. today, if I want, I want to generalize, yeah. what is happening in Africa is that Africa has been bought mm. mostly by Asian countries. Asian company, countries, mm. by European countries, uh, by uh, American countries. Mm. This is why you are seeing we are being tossed left, right, le uh, uh, center, like pawns. Mm. I love to say this. When, when I sit here, mm. you ask me questions. I want to tell you to say I'm going to give the Zambians a free education. I'm going to give Zambians free medical. I'm going to give Zambians all the what. I sit, everybody who sits here promises Zambians heaven. Right. Sure. And uh, it's not as simple as all that. Mm. I change my tactic. I am saying, let, let the Zambian who is outside there mm. ask himself, he should look as I say every time, from his feet up to his head, whether he's wearing a hat or he's wearing a wig, what is it that has been, is made in Zambia? The shoes, the trousers, the ring, the tie, everything that we have. There is nothing, if you I look around here, there is nothing that is made in Zambia. Let me leave it there. Then I come and ask the people. When you look around, all these big banks, left, right, center, who is owning them? Mm. All these uh, uh, big farms. I went, I was out, I was passing through these huge farms, mm. and I was asking, whose farm is this? Is a Mzungu. Whose farm was this? Is a Mzungu. Whose farm of that is a Mzungu. All these big farms, mm. to 90%, 70, 90%, they belong to uh, foreigners. Who is owning? The prime land, the best pieces of land, Mukafunsa, Azakamba, oh, look at around Lusaka. Mm. Who has it? Show me. We start it all around Lusaka. There are foreigners who have got these best, best pieces of land. Mm. I go further. Even I in Atinaenda school, we were learning the prairies, what they, they do wheat there, they do that. We are learning. What a Canadian farms, what a Canadian eats, mm. what an American. Uh, whose curriculum is that? What is Chinese, whatever? Whose curriculum is that? Now, I can go further. The minds that we have in this country, who is controlling them? The tourism, who, is, who has it? Now, when you look at this, everything, everything is in the hands of the foreigners is in the hands of Vamuisa. Who is the cause to that? Mm. It's not them. It's the, it's the leadership. It's the leadership. When MMD took over in 1991, they, have no, they had nothing to do but to sell all the companies. They sold everything. I think even their own shoes, as long as they were, it was made by Kaunda, they sold them. Mm. And then they started fighting. Who has stolen what? The fights up to today. You stole this. You stole this. Because they didn't think about the Zambian. They thought about setting it out and sharing the monies. And some of the buildings, they took them privately. Mm. You see? So, when you look at that, when you look at that, a Zambian owns nothing. Completely nothing. 
we don't control the economy. Mm. You even go and bring the Bank of China into this country so that it can be giving Chinese at 0% to exploit us more. So these are the things that I run to, I want to answer, so that people should understand why we are suffering. Mm. We are not suffering because we are lazy. No, we are suffering because, number one, we don't have developed social institutions that talk about me, that do things about me, and so on and so on. Number two, we don't have developed technologies that belong to me, that I can use if I need a tractor, if I need a machinery, and so on and so on. Number three, the money market is unfair. We don't have money uh, that is favorable to you and me. If I want to go and borrow, I have to borrow at 40%. And even then, I need to get my everything na, 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 na to, na to my to my to my little little uh, uh, to my to my little little, little to answer to my, my grandmother and things like that. I have to give the bank as collateral and it remain completely nothing. Now I have a, a living example where a white man, a friend of mine, like unfortunately is late. May he so rest in peace. He got a piece of land from the chief, an offer from the chief. And he goes with this offer from the chief, goes to Barclays Bank at that particular time, and he gets a credit facility of $1 million. He boasts around. My heart could, I looked and said, you, my God. Yeah, I don't want to say certain other words here. Yeah. But this is where, what I'm talking about, Zambia for Zambians. The person who should have gotten that type of credit with that piece of land should be a Zambian. Mm. Now you see, I have said all these things. We own nothing. We are being discri uh, discriminated. Mm. Then our leaders are busy giving these biz bi bi big pieces of land to these foreigners. And they bring these foreigners are, are taking over everything. There are businesses, young people, young powerful Zambians who have started businesses in Zambia. Now the businesses have closed because a Chinese comes. They said there's a policy mm. that block making is for Zambians. Who is making blocks around Lusaka? Mm. They are Lebanese. Go and move around. It's Lebanese who are making blocks. Mm. And the worker is a Zambian who sleeps there. Him is sitting there. He gets his man, the money. He remits the money to Lebanon. The person working there is a Zambian. What is it block making? Block making 100% the, 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 the material you need is Zambian. Mm. It's Zambian stone, Zambian what, Zambian soil, Zambian everything. Mm. Surely, surely, can a Zambian not do that? The only thing that the Zambian, why the Zambian cannot do that? Mm. One, is he denied of the machinery. Two, he's denied of the money for him to go and borrow money so that he is able to do it. Mm. The, this, that's what we get. Our agenda right. of Narep, Pamtima, Stephen Nirenda is that a, Zambia, a Zambian will run these companies. That in every district mm. of Zambia, there's going to be big factories at least a factory in every district. And these factories will make Zambians become rich. And when they are rich, they are going to develop and invest in other things. Mm. You can't have somebody who is a leader who wants to be a president. You go and invest in ShopRite. You go and invest in, 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 uh, in Hungry Lion. Hungry Lions brings chickens from South Africa, already sorted, already cut in pieces. And here they just push it in the oven. And you say you want to develop a country? No. When you start from such leaders, already remove them from the, the panel. The Zambia <clears throat> is for Zambians, or Zambia should be for Zambians, uh, you know, uh, a slogan that you've kept uh, using. Some people are going to argue with you um, to say, again, President Nirenda doesn't know what he's talking about because really certain things are very difficult to, uh, to realize or to achieve. On your own, I'm glad because you've got vast examples you are giving right now. And 
hence making my, my interview very easy because most of the things that you are floating and I'm just making follow-ups. You've talked about uh, the police that was introduced, uh, uh, was announced by Chimba Kambuli in 2017 about summer there in which he had ordered that the, no any foreign uh, company or Chinese should be engaged in a block making machine, I mean uh, 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 block making uh, machines as well as all companies. And also the rearing of chickens as well. I remember that police, but it never worked. You know, this doesn't, this Mr. Nirenda gives you that fear to say, I think there could be something hidden that makes us leaders when we get there uh, fail to achieve or to remember certain things. Because it becomes very easy and a, a talk show when you were discussing like this, very mm. sweet to the people that are listening. Yes. You know, and uh, Zambia should be for Zambians. That's the first example I've given yes. you. The other example, again, I'll remind you is that maybe the PF as well, they are going to tell you, and they've been preaching about all these issues, to say the MMD, which you have mentioned yourself, to say they kept or they went basic in uh, selling or privatizing uh, companies. When the PF came in through Microsoft, uh, the first company to nationalize or take back was uh, Zamtel. You know, again today they are, the PF are boasting to say they are, take, they are slowly taking back the mines that were sought, that were privatized by the MMD regime. Mm. And uh, talking about the mines as well, don't mm. you think that your manifesto or your slogan is slowly being uh, whitewashed? Or no, being no, 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 no. It is wrong what the PF is doing. Mm. Don't take that company and let the government run. The government can't run anything. Mm. I'll tell you what happens in business. Yeah. If I make a mistake, I must pay for it. It depends. If I, I am running my private business, hmm. any mistake that you make, you have to pay for it. You pay heavily. Right. You can even get bankrupt. So any, any, any project that the government is, is running, hmm. whether they make mistakes or not, they don't care. I was going uh, into, uh, I, 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 I saw a project that the government is doing. There are many of them, hmm. but there is this special one. The government was making this project, I think it was in MD, this project started in MMD. Mm. That project is up to now, they have built everything, that, that up to now, that project is not functioning. Mm. There are millions, if not billions of kwacha that have gone there. Tell me, if it was a private person, would he survive? He was going to be bankrupt. Now, because the government makes decisions which, whether they make money or they don't make money, they don't care. Whether it works or it doesn't work, they don't care. Mm. That's why in third world countries, Zambia inclusive, mm. everywhere you go, you have got white elephants. Buildings that are there, they are bringing nothing. Mm. Machinery that are bought are doing nothing. Mm. Because the decision making of the government can never can never be questions, questioned why, if it is not good. Mm. You, you look at uh, the fire tender. It was a wrong decision, perhaps, I don't know. Mm. But who has been punished? No one. So governments, even when they take that away, they should not be the one, really, to run. The government must be responsible mm. of bringing out policies Policies that will favor the Zambian people. Mm. Policies that is going to make... Who should run those mines? Zambians. Zambians. Yes, but not the government. All now, right. let me say this. We have got a lot of educated Zambians, miners. Mm. I studied with them. And I can point to them. They are around. Some of them, they went to Australia. They worked. They are here mm. with powerful, powerful knowledge. These people put them together. Put the miners, different engineers inside together, put the lawyers, put accountants, let them form a consortium. You will scrutinize them. These are the people. When they form a consortium now, mm. you will now provide what I talked about now. Developed technologies. Give them machinery. Show them where they can borrow money at a lower rate. Mm. And you as a government, you are a guarantor. You go with a carrot and a whip. These guys, you can borrow $10 billion to do this project. But you have to report to make sure that this $10 billion doesn't go into your pockets. Every day we check. 
there are different people that are there. And these different people, they are running. Mm. So you can't take the government to run such an institution. Mm. Especially in our society where a ruling party thinks owns everything in that country. So a ruling party is going to use that as if it's its own bed in its own bad bedroom. Mm. And that's a mistake. But you have seen Paris, do you Paris appreciate uh, the takeover of these uh, companies, let's say Zamteo by the government, as well as KCM in the hands of uh, the government or the Zamen people? Because <coughs> government is for the people. What is government the is run by the, the Zamen people. Uh, um, do you uh, appreciate Mr. that Piri, takeover? Yes. Ms. IP, mm. let me say this. Sure. The, what is wrong is wrong. What is right is right. Mm. I cannot do wrong, two wrongs and think I'm right. Yeah. First of all, those people, they did something wrong for the government to come in. Mm. And then the government is again doing something wrong by taking that thing and misusing it. Mm. It's wrong. Use the right channel. That's what I'm saying. There are powerful Zambians who can run these markets. Mm. Uh, this, on a profit basis. Now, do we know how much money we are making? Mm. And, and can we compare to say, okay... If it's run by the government, the money will be that. If it's run by private, the money is there. I can tell you that private initiative will yield more profitability for the Zambian people than the, that, that government-run uh, 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 institution. So would you say that uh, it could have been better if those mines or uh, Zamte or among other institutions were left in the hands of the foreigners? Because you are saying what is wrong is wrong. Yes. You cannot take over the, the com uh, uh, private institution uh, or take over the company, then you continue running as government mm. for your own uh, mileage, for your own benefits. Yes. Would you say it was going to be better for those companies to remain in the hands of the foreigners? No. No, no, no. I am saying mm. take those, organ uh, go those companies I, I get you and clear. give them to the Zambian clear. people. Yes, to I run. get you clear. Yes. To say, and my question is, is that those institutions or those companies were first of all in the hands of the foreigners yes. that had gotten those, I, I call them over Muisa personally, yes. uh, because they had gotten those uh, companies in our hands. Mm. You know, and coming back to your slogan, the Zambia should be for Zambians, yes. and government goes further to take over KCM yes. in the hands of, or for the benefit mm. of the people of Zambia. Do you now, appreciate now, that? Now, now, I don't appreciate it. I'll give you an example, yeah. a very practical example, where I was involved. Mm. The Zam, they were privatizing uh, uh, Mamba mm. mines. They were giving it away yeah. to companies. Mm. We, as Zambians, we, we did a bid. That was during Manawasa's period time. Mm. We had powerful guys. They were miners, and one of them was the person who had even run the Mamba mines, mm. who knew the problems, and so on and so on. So I was there as an engineer. They were mining engineers. Mm. They were financiers. They were bankers. We had the cream. They were business people. Mm. The cream of Zambians. We paid a lot of money to go and bid. What did the, did the, 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 the Manawasa MMD, Manawasa's government do? Mm. It took it. It gave it to, 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 to the Indians. That's how the Indians got that thing. Mm. Now, when the Indians make the money, where do they take the money? Definitely to India. Right up now, do you see the, can you see the road to Senazese? It's done. It's damaged. Yeah. They don't care. Us, if we are taken over, we say, guys, this is our road. We are Zambians. We are going to build that road. And they are so, saying see, Rome was not built in one day. Similar. You need to start from somewhere. Yes. That's what they are saying. Who? That's Who? what the people are saying. To say Rome was not built within... They have been around for, hours, ten, for 10 years. For 8 hours. They have been so around. So they take over KSM by government, maybe... The next option would be from you to say they have done better, I, and I now wanted, what they can do is to set up a, you know, a private uh, co co consortium I, so that those mines can now be handed over to the hands of the private sector. I, wanted, I wanted to finish your you question. Can, yeah, sure. Your question was in Zamtel. Mm. So I believe that if the government wanted to sell the Zamtel, mm. it would have first of all given the priority to the Zambians. Mm. To the Zambians, can you make a bid? This is yours. We are giving you one and a half years or two years mm. to make sure that Zambians come up with ideas how they can take over that. Right. One, it didn't happen. Mm. They went straight and sold it to the, to the Libyans. The story, you know it. Mm. Similarly, even now, 
you, what you are asking me yeah. to say they are going, have they told us? Mm. They have they told us to say, we temporarily get it, we are the temporal custodian. Mm. But at the end of the day, we are going to make sure that a consortium mm. or Zambians is going to take over and run it. There's nothing like that. If that was the case, I was going to welcome it, say, oh, that's fantastic. Right. That's what we want. Zambians need to control the wealth of this country. Mm. If that does not happen, we are going to be the slaves, our children, if we are not slaves already. Mm. We are slaves already. You know, I moved around. Yesterday I moved around. I checked in a lot of companies mm. where Lebanese, Chinese, and all these guys are using our Zambians. They are, they are purely slaves. I asked him, uh, so how is it? Our guys, they are earning 800 kwacha and he's making blocks. Mm. He's earning 1,000 kwacha and he's making blocks. Where the owner is sleeping at home. What is this? What is investment is that in a block? That investment, that machine which costs less than 10,000 kwacha? And you call that investment? Why can you not take these machines and give them to the Zambians? Yet you go and get 30 million, 40 million. You say this is Zambian empowerment so that they vote for you. No. Let's, let's wake up. Let's look at things differently. You know, a leader like me at my age, you should now know that you have done, you have done, you have gone through, you have, now your job is to make sure that you do the right things and leave the, this country or this world better than you left it. Mm. Now, <clears throat> if you look at us Zambians, literally, we are so lucky people that we are so rich. Believe, perhaps that's why we are just playing like that. Zambia is rich, rich stinking rich mm. it's got <laughs> it's got everything mm. just the trees i was going around i was in Mfue, just admiring the trees i was in masavombe for you all that is money of course right. i was in masavombe admiring the water the water everywhere i just look my god where there's water there's life where there's water there's industry mm. Industry in the world started along the rivers. Now you take the, the, the banks of the rivers, you give them to a white man. You say, you, you, go, you take your mothers and your fathers to areas where there's no water. And then you say, we're not thinking. I want to imagine that uh, we are restarting this interview. Uh, President uh, Stephen Nirenda, uh, we have to begin from there because I know that this possibly could be our last interview uh, before... Um, you know, maybe from here you are going to go to State House. Um, my question is, what is your priority agenda in terms of achievements? We have heard a lot of promises that have been laid on the table, that have been conveyed to the people of Zambia in the last two to three months. Manifestos or promises like fixing the economy within uh, three hours. <laughs> you, saw, you swear me at 10 hours, for example. You come at 14 hours, go home and sleep in peace because by then the kwacha would have appreciated. Mm. Very enticing message because the people of Zambia wants to have a kwacha that is going to have value. Mm. You know, very interesting. Let's look uh, at we, We've had uh, people like uh, others, Roosevelt Tonga, saying when I come in, uh, I form government, all the foreigners, they have to pack their bags and go. Mm. What is yours? The people yeah. are saying... 24-7 economy, driven economy. I, I, I don't know. Uh, mm. First of all, the only person that I want to criticize first, number one, is PF. Mm. The, the, there's no, nothing that PF can tell us. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, if, if, if the, the, the worst thing that PF has done is to make sure that the Zambians have nothing. That's the worst thing. Mm. For me, that's the worst thing that started in MMD is finishing in PF, that Zambians have nothing. Mm. But, you know, we talk a lot. Yeah. I told you, when we come into this seat, mm. we are sitting like that. Zambians are watching. Yeah. We want to promise heaven on earth. Exactly. There is no free lunch on here, on earth. Zambians outside there. If somebody is telling you to say this is going to be just like that, is lying. Every Zambian has to work hard and hard. All that I have to do is to facilitate that he has work. To facilitate 
that these things are in the right Which direction. Which one is a lie here, President Mirenda? Is it? It's a lie to say, when I can, I take over, mm -hmm. I'm going, the, the, the quarter will just uh, appreciate overnight. That's a lie. It's a lie. He's an economist. He knows what he's, what he's saying. I, I don't know. I don't want to mention other team. Yeah, but and why do you say it's a lie if you really don't let, know? Let me he's tell an you. economist, for example. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, the best uh, uh, industries, hmm. uh, countries, which are running the best uh, economies in the world, they are not run by uh, economists. Economists have dropped the economies of countries. I will tell you, uh, two countries... Japan and South Korea, they have been run, they are, they are one of the best economies, they have been run by lawyers. Lawyers. Right. China, uh, Taiwan, and Singapore, best uh, economies, they have been run by, an engineer, by engineers. The policies are made by engineers. The engineers are running the economy. There is the economies of, of, of developed countries, they have been dropped down by economies. Economies have dropped down the, the economies in developing countries. Look at Africa, for example. Look at Africa. We send these guys to go and they have uh, their professors, their what? They come here, what is happening? You are doing this, what? You, you've got all that. It's wasting money. Zambia and down economies, they need to be built. We need to build machinery. We need to build houses. We need to build these things. So when they are, start, when they are standing, an economist can come now and write his papers mm -hmm. and sit in a nice chair and write his papers. But somebody must build it, and that's an engineer. What would be yours? Let's say you are sworn in today mm -hmm. at 10 hours. Yes. What should the people of Zambia expect at 14 hours? Uh, the people of Zambia at 14 hours, yeah. they should expect, number one, that... Uh, uh, Stephen Yerenda president has reduced all his powers to executive powers, not to legislature, not to judicial. Mm. That's number one. Number one is to make sure I restrict myself. I should not be the person to appoint uh, chief justice. I should not be the person to appoint the, the, the boss of the police. Or No. Mm. We, I will create, I will make sure that I create a a board of committees that are going to be responsible in handling the judicial personnel. If you want to become a judge, you should go and you'll be interviewed by that. And if, if those guys see that you're not doing the right thing, they should be able to fire you or remove you. Can that from be this. done within two hours? You are sworn in 10 hours and 14 hours you reduce uh, your powers, presidential uh, powers? Uh, uh, I uh, thought those are constitutional uh, issues. Yes, yes. That yes, needs yes. to be taken to parliament. I have started telling you to say hmm. from, uh, from, from 10 hours to 14 hours, yeah. I'll make sure that I reduce those powers. It's it, a willpower. How? How possible? You, you no. It's a constitution that requires you it is to starts make by, appointments. It starts exactly. by me right, reading my, hmm. my, my, my what? My, my... It's a blueprint. No, I, there. no. I, I don't, listen. I may not be no, that listen. good, but I know that for sure that for you to change anything in terms of uh, your powers and the likes, the appointments you make, they have to go through the parliament yes. to change or to refine the laws. Yes. I've, I've, uh, mm. I've, I, 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 you have spoken. Yeah. Now let me explain. Please. When you are being sworn in, mm. you definitely do have a speech to give to the yes. people. Yeah? Mm. That's what I'm talking about. In my speech, these are the things that will be put forward. From today onwards, mm. the first thing that we are going to do, I don't want to dip my hand into the legislature, to dip my hand into the uh, judicial. Mm. I will remain here and as executive. And by the way, these things that you are talking about, mm. they are already there. They are in the constitution. They talk about separation of powers, yeah. but does the president exist, uh, ex uh, uh, use them? Mm. No, he's misusing them. You've seen that actually the president will go further and even manipulate, manipulate the judicial, manipulate the, the parliament to make sure. We saw Bill 10. Mm. It was, where was it? Who was manipulating it? It's this government. They wanted to manipulate it so that it suits them. Now, mm. I, I, we are talking about 10. There's a, a thing that I've written. These are the things I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, 
the first one year or one and a half years, between one year to one and a half years, mm. the first thing to be sorted out is the constitution and the balance. Because the balance thing, mm. it touches the thing of one Zambia, one nation. Yeah. You don't handle it properly, the one Zambia, one nation is shaking. So mm. handle the constitution. The constitution is like a safe Let's start with where the you the store Barossa things. Let's talk about the, the, the yes. Barossa land. How yes. do you want to harmonize uh, this um, issue that has been there for a long, it's, so many years? It's a very simple yeah. thing. You know, in 1964, uh, when you were taking over, yeah. uh, there was Northern Rhodesia, right? And the mm. Balose, right? Mm. Uh, Zambia would have only been either Northern Rhodesia alone, or perhaps Balose alone. Mm. But the negotiation was Northern Rhodesia. Yeah. So the Balose people said, we want to form one Zambia, one nation, and be part and parcel of Zambia. Zambia. Yeah. So we created one country. But definitely... There are issues. Hmm. There are issues. If, if you have an issue, uh, uh, Mr. IP, you have an issue, hmm. I, I, I cannot just sit and neglect them. They are going to, it, 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 it will uh, erupt. It can become a, a dangerous uh, relationship hmm. that can end up into fighting. So what do you do? You listen. Listen to you, the, your partner. What is it? What is the problem? You discuss the problem. And you manage the expectations. In a marriage, you have expectations, I have expectations. We put them together, we f forge ahead. I def definitely, I do not think that any Zambian, whether it's from the west or from the east, wants to be apart. We want all to remain one Zambia, one nation. But if there are problems, you sit down and talk. You can't be pushing them forward. You have seen that presidents and even candidates, they fail to answer these questions. They say, no, we will, we will see it when we are there. No, as we face it now, we will sit down and discuss what and are you... was uh, Michael Sata's message, you know, to give back the Balose Rand, if I remember. No, you don't need to give back. Yeah. And I don't think they want it gotten back. Mm. No. They are also interested in one Zambia, one nation, right. under certain expectations, mm. under certain things that they want. Simple. You, I, you, you, maybe you've met them. What do they want, <coughs> really? What is at stake here? You, it's just, it, it, you, know, you know what is at stake? Mm. Even you. It's not only a, a person from Western province. Yeah. It's even you. Even me. What is at stake here is that I'm not given the services and goods that I need from this country. Mm. That a foreigner is the one that is enjoying. Mm. That's all. If, if everyone here is feeling good, he's got services and, 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 and goods that, that are being delivered by the nation, mm. by the government, why should I start, stand even here and want to become a president? Mm. I can enjoy better outside there. I say, you are doing good, Mr. Lungu. Continue like that. I go and sit. I go to Bahamas and I sit and enjoy the world. Mm. Would you think, do you think, really, I don't know my friends, mm. but do you think me sitting in this chair, I'm enjoying? Mm. If you want to find out whether I'm enjoying mm. or not, go and ask my wife. She mm. will tell you to say, this man is really, really suffering in this. But I want to suffer. Mm. I want to sacrifice for the Zambian people. I, Mr. Peter, I will tell you, anybody who comes to me and says, here is money, we want to make you a president, but we want you to give, you, to give us that place, is uh, wasting his time. I will not get any money of that nature. I know a lot of my friends who have sold the, this country. Mm. Sold this country for the sake of them having money and thinking they are going to, to win the elections. A few questions before <coughs> we conclude uh, this interview. Are you one of those uh, opposition political party leaders that uh, sometimes you sit back and uh, look at what your colleague or your colleagues in the may maybe ruling party have done, because maybe your neighbor, and, is, you know, appreciate them, what they have done. Do you appreciate when you see something to appreciate? Yes, I, I'm a person who will want every, people asking me questions. Mm. I tell them, hey, be careful, that is not right. Yeah, and be that, careful, that, that's, that is Yes. That forms my question now. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, from 2011, when the PF formed government, until now, mm. when they are 
tenure of office is about <coughs> to expire in the next three days. <coughs> what things or what achievements would you say the PFA think at this point they have done better? Congrats to them. Uh, the, the only thing that I congratulate the PF and his government and my, my friend, the Republican president, His Excellency Lungu, mm. the only thing that I commend them is that I am still living in peace. Mm. I can walk out here now and walk up to my home. There is peace. Mm. I, can, I know there are violence, pockets of violence, like today uh, we were attacked. Uh, mm. <coughs> there are pockets of violence there, mm. but generally, we are a peaceful nation and they have maintained the peace. That we should leave it to them. It's not easy. Mm. It's not easy to run an, an, a country, especially where, where, <coughs> where uh, uh, emotions are so high and you have peace. Mm. Everybody will agree. We are here talking because we have peace. I know countries where I cannot sit here and talk what I'm talking about. Mm. I know there are countries like that. So I commend them. There is peace. Whoever is saying we don't have, he should go to South Africa. He should go to Zimbabwe. Mm. He should go to the other countries and see. We are living in peace and we are enjoying peace here. Uh, talking about peace, uh, I know that uh, the government has decided to engage in other wings of uh, the security system to ensure that they boost up manpower and police in these elections. We've seen others again condemning this move, saying this is one sign of uh, you know, intimidating people. What could be the position of NAREP regarding the involvement of the army? And you, you see, um, you see, uh, for me, mm. if this is going to uphold peace, we vote nicely and we go through this, I commend it. Mm. I'm not a person who will just criticize because I'm criticizing, no. Mm. I will tell you what happened today. Yeah. What happened today... I wanted to find out. Yes, today yeah. what happened today, mm. exactly at 15.30, the... the uh, the UPND candidate of Chipata compound in, in Kitwe went blunt in the full view of every people, attacked our chair lady, beat her up, and grabbed the, the keys of the car and went away. Asked, what is the reason? Because she was promising people that this is a better, a better party who offer better services thereafter. I mean, I couldn't. I spoke to the policemen. Right up now, the policemen are hunting for this guy. Is this uh, a Today, propaganda message you are submitting here, President Nirenda, that the UPND uh, members attacked your, your staff? It, the, or, because it, I asked this question you, you, because you UPND know. claims that they are not a violent political party. You know, this that I'm talking about, yeah. it's in the police hands right up now. And if perhaps we, we may he get news that the man has been arrested. Mm. Now, I am not a person who does propaganda. Right. I am not a person who likes PF. PF has done us a lot of damage. Mm. Lots of damage. I, they, they, I, I don't like them. They must go. But even the person who is coming, what, what is he exhibiting? If HH is going to win, what are these guys going to do? There will be a lot of war at the market. They are going to fight. They are going to do all these things. This is, this is, we cannot accept this at all. It's not a propaganda message. Why should the UPND come and attack us? Why? And they have done it today. It, this is terrible. They are already, the arrogance, you can come, you can nicely come and run the country nicely. But this type of arrogance is the same arrogance that was from PF. Now, if you are going to change from PF and go to UPND the way they behave, it's like you are jumping from a frying pan, you jump into the fire. Be very careful what you are doing, guys. Mm. I am not, I, 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 whoever wins should win on merit. Let's not have all these emotions, no. Right. It's, it's bad. If, 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 president, if, if UPND wins, I'm going to congratulate them and say, they are my friends, mm. I'll work with them. But, but this, what they are doing is not right. We are a small party. We are a very peaceful party. We don't fight. We don't insult. Mm. But what they have done today, I can't take it. They did it also in, 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 in Choma. Mm. They wanted to ban our guys who were mobilizing there. The, the, the people asked uh, uh, the, the MP there, what he answered was out of this world. These guys, they are a problem. The two big parties, the red and the green, they are a problem. Don't put a vote on them. We have to go.
my question, Mr. Nirenda, is uh, if I, I called you in the next uh, five days from now, in the next maybe 15 days from now, where will you be? At State House or your Secretariat? Um, I, I think that question is vague. For, for me, yeah. for me, ask me mm. to say, are you going to win or you are not going to win? You've answered I, the I will, winning I will, part. I will tell you yeah. that. For me, I've set myself a goal. If I'm going, if my goal is uh, I want to get 10 votes, mm. I get 10 votes, I would have won the elections. If my goal is to get 2 million votes, I get 2 million votes, I won the elections. If my goal was 10 and I get 5, I will sit in my secretariat and say, my God, what have I done? Right. Yeah. I think that's the, the way I would want to answer this question. Right. Thank you so much uh, for coming. We hope to engage you once again in the future. I Thank love you. I love to be here. Thank Zambia you. is for Zambians. Please know that it's only Zambians that will de develop this country. But before we go, allow me just to spend half a minute. Half a minute. Half a minute. Right. What is happening now? People are getting vitenges, are getting t-shirts, are getting money. And even on the voting day, you will get vitenges, you will get money, you get all these things. These things will not help you. These things will not bring you fertilizers. These things are not going to build those roads. These things are not going to build the companies. Please, make sure that you get their money, eat it, but vote for Stephen Nirenda on the 12th of August. Palm Timmer. Zambia is for Zambians, and only Zambia will develop this country. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you. Wishing all the best. Thank you. Great. As we end our discussion here, my guest has been uh, Stephen Nirenda, President of uh, the National Restoration Party, NAREP. Let's find out uh, where he will be after the August uh, 12, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what the President's uh, demands for. Let's also uh, indeed uh, say kudos to my usual hard-working team, always in the studio, obvious Kapunda, uh, Christopher Aptias, Gilbert, a lone man. Thank you so much for those wonderful pictures. Thank you so much. Up next is the main news with uh, Krista Belmunga. My name is uh, Innocent Piri IP. Allow me to say may God, uh, may God bless Zambia and God bless Mother Africa. Good night.